Our next presenter is Brixton Metals. Uh, and presenting on behalf of the company is Chairman and CEO, Gary Thompson. Gary, over to you. All right, thanks, uh, Derek. And uh, welcome everyone to the Brixton Metals Red Cloud Security Summer Silver Conference. So uh, given the time, uh, time limit, uh, I'll leave the uh, safe harbor statement for, for your uh, review. And similarly, uh, on the management and, and directors don't have time to get into uh, the highlights of everybody, but uh, th this presentation is on our website, so you can have a look at this at your leisure. Um, a stock chart, I guess the point out here is that, uh, you know, the company is still, uh, still well financed. Um, we've traded 87 million shares uh, year to date. And uh, so good, good liquidity. Um, obviously, we have a financing uh, live right now that uh, um, uh, strong demand, and, and we'll be closing that up uh, shortly, uh, looking to raise in the neighborhood of uh, about $5 million. Uh, so project location, uh, Brixton's focused in Canada and the U.S. Um, today, I really want to just focus in on the silver opportunity that uh, Brixton has in his portfolio, uh, mainly uh, Thorn, which has been the company's flagship. Um, if you're not that familiar with uh, what we've been doing there, um, in 2014, we published a 21 and a half million silver equivalent ounce resource um, on the Oban and, and uh, Talisker and Glenfiddich zones. Um, and uh, in Hog Heaven, uh, we have a combined uh, gold and silver at about 68 million ounces of silver equivalent, uh, given the current uh, gold silver ratio. Uh, the historic resource uh, puts it at about 47 million ounces of silver and, and 230,000 ounces of gold. Uh, both the Hog Heaven and uh, Langus uh, mines were uh, high-grade silver producers. Um, if you just look at the, the Hog Heaven numbers here, uh, 6.7 million ounces of silver were produced. Uh, direct ship uh, ore from, uh, and as well as gold, uh, gold and base metal credits, um, but just the silver alone was a 29 uh, ounce per ton from Hog Heaven, and additional uh, nine ounce per ton material for about 450,000 ounces. And then if you look at Langus, uh, historically produced about 10.4 million ounces of silver at 25 ounce per ton. And the other one, uh, which is separated here, which is another uh, a producer in the cobalt camp called uh, Hud Bay. And it produced 6.4 million ounces at 123 ounce per ton silver. So no resources on the Langus Hudson Bay, um, historic resources only on the Hog Heaven. And we do have a, a 21.5 million inferred resource at, at Thorn. So a little bit about Hog Heaven. Um, it's a near-term development opportunity. A lot of historical work uh, located up in Northwest Montana. This was a, uh, a feasibility stage, uh, fully permitted mine to build in, in the late 80s. The, uh, most of the work that was done uh, historic and, and a lot of the work was done in the 1970s and 1980s up till uh, the feasibility and really the collapse of uh, the price of uh, silver and gold put this uh, project development on ice. Um, and uh, we acquired it a couple of years ago. But you can see by this map, most of the work was done, uh, most of the drilling was done in the main mine area in uh, Old Hill. Uh, and this is where some of the historical production was. Um, uh, the WF area, which had um, some very high grade, you can see up to 3,000 ounces per ton silver uh, came out of this WF area. And this is gonna be one of the areas that we wanna do some drilling on uh, going forward. They also mined a little bit from the Old Hill very shallow drilling here though. Uh, I think the average on Old Hill is about 30 meters of drilling. Um, and interestingly, uh, down at the Martin mine, and there's a, a series about of a half a dozen or more um, workings uh, where they pulled some high grade silver gold out of here. And as far as we can tell, not much, uh, if any drilling done in the Southern part of these targets. So really a cluster of, of zones uh, that we've been uh, working on uh, to flush out some uh, the opportunity uh, on this project. Uh, 722 holes uh, to date, and then we added another seven holes uh, with the recent drilling that we've done. Uh, the focus for Brixton in the 2020 was to uh, do some confirmation drilling on, on the main mine area. This is where uh, a lot of the historical drilling was done and, and most of the mining was done. Uh, given the vintage of the drilling, the 1970s and 1980s, and the fact that a lot of the drilling was done uh, with uh, reverse circulation, uh, you just get the, the chips. Uh, we wanted to get some fresh core into it and confirm some of those numbers with this historical work um, and, and see what that, uh, that looks like. And also keep in mind, uh, they largely discounted the base metals 
So we wanted to see uh, what kind of base metal numbers that we could generate uh, from some of this recent drilling. So overall, I would say this uh, program, limited program was success, 1400 meters. Um, and this is uh, really highlighting uh, some of the uh, drilling that we did. Uh, hole number two, you can see, you know, there was a 224 meter section um, that was uh, well mineralized. Um, and within that, there's a, really an upper zone and, and a lower zone uh, where, where most of the uh, higher grade uh, resides. Uh, the lower zone, if you were to combine, uh, do a weighted average on the lower zone, you can see the numbers here, uh, fi uh, 53 meters of about 300 grams of silver equivalent, uh, which is a pretty, pretty impressive zone. And then obviously within that, there's a series of uh, stacked uh, horizons. Now what's interesting about this zone is this is in the lower part of the zone is a, a sedimentary hosted stratiform uh, style mineralization. So we have a series of, of quite high grade intervals within that broader inter interval. But the upper zone was a more um, porphyritic and, and breccia uh, hosted style mineralization. And uh, even when the, uh, within the upper zone, we're getting some, um, some impressive uh, widths, uh, five and a half meters of about a 700 uh, gram silver equivalent. So an interesting target, you can see the histogram on, on the left, uh, quite, quite well mineralized uh, throughout and basically uh, still ended in uh, low grade mineralization at the bottom of about 300 meters at the bottom of the hole. Uh, just some more detail on, on, on the core, obviously it's a massive sulfide uh, mineralization, uh, a lot of pyrite and, uh, and sulfur salts. Um, but I find this uh, quite intriguing, these uh, sort of bugginess to, uh, to the sulfide. So very well juiced up, uh, mineralized uh, zones. Uh, pretty pretty impressive uh, um, silver, gold, copper horizons here. So the next uh, steps for this project is to uh, continue our, our stakeholder um, engagement to uh, get that social license uh, locally. And then so we're planning a, a phase two program um, on some of these other targets that, that we, we talked about. And really the goal, the short term goal for us is to define a maiden resource and we want to get enough material uh, behind us that we can get this thing into a PEA. Um, one good thing that they did keep all the old core, all the cuttings. Uh, so we have a lot of data to, to work with. A lot of metal, metallurgical work was done on the project. Um, but we're really focusing on, on the sulfide opportunity. The previous miners uh, were primarily focused on the near surface oxide. And we think there's a bigger, bigger prize, better opportunity on, on the high grade uh, sulfide. So that's going to be our focus uh, going forward here. Uh, quickly, just up to uh, Thorn. Uh, this is where we're actively, um, uh, we have guys, in fact, we've had crews on this project since uh, June, uh, conducting uh, geochem and, and geophysics. And we'll be coming out with a bit of an update uh, tomorrow and then over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we are planning to start some drilling here in, in, uh, in, in, in August. Now, just to focus, uh, took a little step back on, on this project because it's it's kind of morphed into a large scale a porphyry camp, but I wanted to revisit some of the uh, silver numbers um, because of the silver conference uh, and the silver focus of this uh, conference. I wanted to highlight uh, some of the silver uh, results that we've generated on, uh, on the Thorn project. Now this is looking at the, the Oban uh, zone, the cross section. Um, in 2019, we drilled this uh, hole 150 uh, there was a vertical hole, you can see, started up here. It didn't get into mineralization until about 100 meters, um, but there was a 554 meter interval uh, that returned, uh, you can see 40, 43 grams per ton silver and a half a gram of gold and, and some base metals. And within that was 135 meters of 133 grams silver and 1.3 grams of gold and, and base metals. But uh, what started this thing for us was in 2011, um, hole 60 uh, returned 95 meters, uh, 1.7 grams of gold and 628 grams silver, uh, which is about 900 grams silver equivalent uh, based on 2012 uh, uh, gold, gold, silver and base metal values. But near surface, a very high grade interval of nine meters or three kilos of, uh, per ton silver. So some pretty impressive uh, silver intercepts within this polymetallic breccia zone. Um, even though we're chasing a bigger target on, on the project, uh, we, we do believe there's still room to grow uh, this Oban zone. And there's uh, evidence to support uh, another similar style diatreme on, not too far from here on, on the property that um, we've yet to flesh out uh, in, 
and intercept this kind of mineralization through drilling. So more work to be done to follow up this. Uh, this is part of our resource uh, work that was done um, on the block models. Uh, mostly you can see the pit design here uh, was quite shallow uh, where we pulled, um, pulled some of the resource out of and then they had a small underground uh, section below this. Um, so lots of room to grow, I think, on this. Uh, this is the 21 and a half million silver equivalent ounces. Most of that resided uh, in the Oban zone. You can see 12 and a half million silver equivalent in pit uh, inferred resource and 1.9 million silver equivalent on underground. Now this resource was done quite shallow and the work that we've done uh, in the last few years, uh, obviously we've gone quite deep now. We're down to uh, mineralization down to 650 meters. So um, we think we can get an upgraded, uh, updated resource on, on this uh, zone in, in its own right. So again, this is that uh, 95 meter uh, interval came, came out of here. Um, just to lay of the land, this is the Camp Creek porphyry target. That we think that re resides somewhere below here at depth. Uh, this is the whole 150 in the Breccia zone. And this is the uh, Glenfiddich zone where we're planning to do some drilling uh, this year. But keep in mind, this is the extent of the map for Thorn, um, where we've done a lot of the historical work. It's still a pretty small area in, in relation to the bigger property. Now, I just want to touch a little bit on uh, our two so silver projects in Ontario. This is part of the cobalt camp assets that we acquired in 2016. We acquired actually a group of uh, claims and the two that we, we still hold are the Langus mine and the Hud, Hud Bay mine. And if you're not that familiar with the, uh, the cobalt camp, it still remains Canada's uh, largest silver producing camp and uh, produce over, uh, over 500 million ounces of silver uh, historically there. Um, what's been impressive uh, for us about the project is the uh, extremely high grade silver and you get uh, native silver. So we think from a processing perspective, um, once we get these things up to resource category, um, we should be able to crush this material and, and let gravity do the work. Uh, so this is just some of the native silver uh, samples you can see, uh, pretty spectacular uh, silver in, in, in the rock and we've been successful in uh, pulling uh, very high grades out of, out of some of the drilling. Um, what's interesting about it, and uh, contrary to what some people might think, is that you know the camp is is known for narrow high grade. Yes, that's true, but we've been able to demonstrate uh, broad uh, mineralized intervals with disseminated native silver. You can see in this core on these uh, fracture uh, coatings, you get native silver, as al and also uh, veinlets, and uh, in some cases uh, fairly, fairly broad. Uh, massive sil silver and, um, and cobalt uh, mineralization. So this is an example uh, that we drilled between uh, shaft six and seven. Uh, we pulled in 2018, 7.8 meters of 2.7 kilos of silver. And within that was a one meter interval of uh, 15 uh, kilos uh, per ton silver. Uh, this was uh, some highlights from uh, some of the recent work that we've done in, in 2020. Um, some nice native silver uh, mineralization here. These are the tip, pretty typical veins you get, but you also get this disseminated and fracture filling and little hairline uh, veinlets as well. So this is a new zone here on this LM2076 uh, outside of the historical workings. And that was really our objective is to drill in around the workings and see if we could find some mineralization that uh, wasn't exploited. So that's been successful, um, quite shallow drilling. And uh, we spent a fair amount of uh, time drilling in around this area. This is actually one of the shafts that they were mining and they didn't exploit, uh, there's a probably about 100, 150 meter section that they did not exploit the silver. And you can see some of these grades here, um, some, some off the chart uh, silver numbers are very shallow. Um, and that's our plan really is to uh, continue to work uh, shallow drilling and sort of a radial fan type drilling um, to see if we can put together a multi-million ounce silver resource at, at some very high grades. So I think Brixton has been able to demonstrate uh, you can generate some very high grade uh, silver numbers over uh, good mineable widths. And I've highlighted some here, five meters of, of uh, almost 1300 gram silver, um, 18 meters of 464, 13 meters of 776. Um, so with, with I think a high, high density drilling, um, our objective is to build a multi-million ounce uh, resource of silver here in, in the short order. And this is a good project for us to get working on over the winter months. So we've uh, most of the drilling was done on the uh, Langus mine. This is the other one we're calling Hud Bay, 
which is close to the town of Cobalt. Uh, we did some drilling uh, here as well. Uh, two meters of 1600 gram silver, uh, 6.7 meters of 626 gram silver. Again, just drilling in around the, the old workings. Um, you can see all the little vein networks here where it looks like they're just riddled with veins all over the place here. So again, with some high density drilling, we think we can uh, prove up some, some ounces here. Uh, good, good high grade margin material. So that's pretty much it for my, my pitch. I think really the next steps for us is to continue to drill high impact uh, exploration targets, continue to consolidate uh, lands in and around these uh, holdings on on-trend, uh, generate new, uh, new targets, and uh, really build on our mineralized zones toward a uh, 4311 major resources and, and expand from there. So with that, I can happy to open it up to questions. Sure, thanks, Gary. Um, maybe uh, start with, obviously you've got uh, three uh, projects with substantial amounts of silver, um, more, two of the more pure play silver projects, but, uh, and obviously you have a, a gold project as well that we haven't even touched on today. Um, maybe talk a little bit about where, uh, where investors can expect near, uh, news flow over the near term from uh, your assets and where you're sort of focusing your, uh, your exploration dollars. Sure. Um, yeah, so I think right now, um, and we'll be coming up with an update tomorrow on, on the Thorn project. I mean, we've had guys uh, crews there since uh, June, uh, mostly geochem, geophysics uh, work. And so we're going to highlight some of that. And that's really focused us in on some uh, drilling. So the initial drilling that we're uh, going into uh, in August will be focused on the Thorn project in a target called the Outlaw Zone. Uh, this is a uh, four kilometer a gold silver uh, horizon that's a, a stratiform sedimentary hosted uh, gold silver zone that uh, we've done some work on over the years. It was originally found by Chevron back in the 80s. A four kilometer long target and we've drilled about a half a dozen holes into it. Um, but the focus this year has been more on the west side of this uh, outlaw zone, so the west outlaw area where we've generated um, up to uh, 68 grams per ton gold on, on the west, uh, west side of this target. So that's encouraging because that's a fairly significant zone in itself, some 500, by, uh, 500 meters by a kilometer of, uh, of gold mineralization and, and silver. Um, then that has not been uh, drill tested. So uh, we, we see that as a pot potentially a higher grade uh, part of the system. So that's going to be the, the focus for, for August. And then we're, we're still dressing up, uh, fine tuning some of the other targets on, on, um, on the Thorn project. And uh, those are mainly uh, porphyry scale targets uh, in around the Camp Creek area where we drilled some porphyry deep targets last year. And in around that Oban area where, where we showed earlier with the polymetallic. We think that is a, really a, a byproduct of the porphyry system. So we want to focus in on that. And then this year is a bit of a step back on some other targets. And what we're uh, showing is, or we're going to be showing, I think, over the course of the, the summer and fall, is uh, a number of other um, large-scale uh, copper gold porphyry targets on the Thorn project. So that'll be highlighted uh, as, we, as that data comes in and, and we can demonstrate some new targets, which, is, uh, which should be quite exciting on the, the massive 65-kilometer uh, trend uh, district play at, at the Thorn project. The other thing that we want to do uh, this fall is uh, get back down to Hog Heaven and get some uh, new drilling done on some other targets. So the, most of the drilling was focusing around the main mine. Um, we want to focus on some of the other targets like the Old Hill, uh, which had drilled a lot of uh, high grade silver shallow. Uh, so only 30, 40 meter drilling depths on that target. So we think uh, there's a feeder zone driving some high grade at depth and then the WF zone and in around some of the workings on the south part of the uh, cluster of targets there that has not seen much drilling. So I think between uh, the two projects, uh, we'll have a good amount of news flow on, on that. And then as we get into the winter months, I think uh, we could look at maybe getting the drills turning back in, in Ontario there.